This section will be talking about Frameforge Previs Studio 3's set parameters. We will go to set and then say edit set parameters. This allows us to name the set such as grassy field. It allows us to specify a default wall height, textures, colors, and so on for walls. our world and basically what we have is we have a floor a ground that has this texture on it and a sky that has a texture on it over here we have sky settings and ground settings we will leave this at sky settings and we'll click apply texture frameforge comes with a number of existing skies and you can choose like a dark dramatic dusk and as you can see here in this monitor that's applied to the sky. We can now go to the ground and we can apply a texture to the ground. And if you notice that in both cases, when we went to apply a texture, it automatically opened up the correct folder that had the textures for that appropriate category. So when we selected ground, we got ground textures. When we selected sky, we got sky textures. So I'm going to duplicate this so that it is not a single piece of sand on this large floor. And this is an infinite floor plane. So what that means is that you can move the camera as far as you like and you'll never sort of reach the end. The sky is always on the horizon just as it is in the real world. The next thing we're going to look at is something new for version 3 that's exclusive to the Pro and Stereo versions. It is not in the core edition of the program. And what it is is Change Set Location. So what I will do is I will click that for Change Set Location. And what we do is we get a world map. I can click and drag to have it zoom in to a certain position. So if I am shooting in London, I can zoom it into London, double click on London, and now we say United Kingdoms, England, and London, and we can then say place the set at London. Why do we want to do that? Okay, the reason we want to do that will become evident when I exit this dialog. So we'll exit this. And we go to the Lights tab over here. Now, once I've actually set a location, the Lights tab has a clock, which allows me to set a time. So right now we're setting it to 4.10 p.m. And as you can see that when I set a date, and let's go to February or March 9th, 2010, Sunrise at London will be at 6.29 a.m., midday will be at 12.12 12 p.m., and sunset will be at 5.55 p.m. As I approach that time, what you will see, of course, is that the sky is getting darker, it's more orange, and then it goes to brown, and then it goes to blue for night. Now I have an option to override and this will allow me to override the automatically calculated sun position which was based on our geographic location. So I will hit override. This is the view you normally get when you do not have a location selected or if you're using the core version. Now we can't see this very clearly without having something on the set which will cast shadows. So let's put a guy here. Let's tilt down so that we can see a shadow better. Let's go back to the light menu. And now, as you see, as I move the orientation of the sun, the shadow shifts around him. As I change the angle over the horizon, the sun gets brighter and it the shadow gets longer as I bring it closer to the horizon. If I click the auto button, it will return it to the automatic setting based on the location. Let's have an automatic brightness. Um, and at this point, of course, if we put it um, at 3 p.m., it's closer to dusk. As we bring it up to noon, which is almost exactly midday, the, the shadow is behind him. And as we 
go around, the shadow moves accordingly based on the sun's position in the sky. Daylight savings time is automatically set based on the location and the date that you choose.